All right. Hi, everyone. It's 3.58. Started the broadcast a little bit early. Just got done watching Gary V's latest video on Facebook. He's got some great ideas about Facebook marketing. So if you don't follow Gary V, get out there and follow him. Gary Vaynerchuk is his full name but he goes by Gary V. I watch him from time to time and he uh, gives me lots of great ideas. He's got his finger on the pulse of social media and marketing. So just gonna wait for a few minutes to see if anyone joins us today. And then we'll get rolling with it. We're going to talk about SEO today, making your website uh, more attractive to Google and other search engines. I get, give you some examples of my websites and what I've been able to do with them. Give you some tips and tricks and ideas for you to implement yourself. Okay, it's 4 o'clock straight up. And we are waiting for people to come in. Okay, it looks like we got one person in the webinar. Let me jump on over to the attendance panel here. Looks like we got two attendees. Welcome, John and Parker. I don't know if you guys are planning on dialing in, but the dial-in information is right here. Let me bring it up for you. Where's my keynote? There it is. Okay, there's the dial-in information if you guys would like to dial in and ask questions directly. Go ahead and chat with them here. Okay, so let's get this uh, party started here. So today we're talking about Google, well, not just Google, we're talking about search engine optimization and how to build your website and get it found by the search engines to come up high on the search engines. And it looks like someone joined us on the call. How are you doing today? Doing great. Who's this? Oh, good, good. Yeah, if you have any questions, just feel free to uh, speak up and ask. All right, sounds good. All right, so let's see how many other people we got coming on the call with us here. Uh, I've blasted it out to quite a bit of uh, social media, and it's always interesting to see how many live attendees we have. Some people obviously can't make it because they're working their day job and they can't break away. But um, let's go ahead and move on into it here. So let's bring up the next slide here. So basically, you know, when it comes down to search optimization, you need to think about uh, you know, what your keyword phrase is going to be. What is it that people are searching you for? Or what product is it that you want to advertise? And what are people looking for? Um, so, Parker, if you're able to, let me know what kind of product it is that you're selling. 
And let's see if John. I'll ask John what type of product are you selling? So, uh, you want to, you know, take your product um, keyword set and do some research on it see what people are actually typing there's a lot of great tools out there some people use google analytics uh, not google analytics um, google keyword research tool to kind of see what the popularity of certain keyword phrases are um, there are some people that say that's not a good way to do it and uh, there's a tool out there that i've used in the past called jaxi and it's a pretty cool tool. It tells you, uh, it does a bunch of live research, and it's not based on advertising, which the Google keyword tool is. So if um, you know Google wants you to spend money, they're going to tell you, you know, all these keywords are valuable, and you should spend money on them. That may or may not be the best way to find your keyword set. Uh, one way you can do it is you can start a search and as you start to type uh, a certain keyword phrase, Google will make suggestions and it will tell you that, um, oh, this is a common phrase that people type. And that's actually coming from live histories that they've recorded and compiled and, and found to be popular. So I'll show you an example of that in a few minutes here. So let's go on to the next slide. And uh, what I usually tell people to do is pick one thing. Don't try and be a, a master of everything. Just pick one thing that you want to be found for and, you know, do that one thing. And, you know, research it and become... The, the king of that keyword and that's pretty much what I have done and I've done it for several different keyword sets but the one that I'm going to talk about today is the keyword phrase Las Vegas headshot photographer and how I came up with this phrase is after years of you know doing photography and talking to my clients I would ask them you know what did you how did you find me and they say on on the internet and I'd say okay specifically how did you find me did you use Yahoo did you use Google you know which search engine did you use and then they tell me and then I asked them well what did you type uh, do you remember what you typed and most of the time they did because they were calling me right from that search and they said oh I typed in this and you know you came up you know on the first page or whatever so um, this is the keyword set that I've tried to dominate and let me show you my results so this is a search I did this morning and I screen captured it and we can do a live search in a minute but I just want to show you this screen capture I typed in Las Vegas headshot photographer and I did this in a incognito window and you may or may not know about that. I can show you how to create an incognito window. It basically means that Google doesn't know who you are. It just knows that you're an anonymous type person um, surfing the web. They don't have your login information. And you can see here that uh, one of my websites comes up first on the page. Uh, this is with no influence of who I am. And then down here in the map listings, I have two listings. I have one listing for Ace Photo and Video, and I have one listing for Wayne Wallace Photography, two separate uh, photography uh, type businesses. And then I also have a video right here, um, and that's got the keyword set Las Vegas Headshot Photographer. So immediately I'm coming up um, four times with my own properties and then in addition to that if you look uh, right here in this listing you'll see um, it's a Yelp uh, com website and you'll see right in the description of their website you'll see Wayne Wallace photography 
So they're actually digging down into my Yelp listing. And because I'm listed as a headshot photographer, then I come up in this description of theirs. So um, you want to make sure you also use your keywords on website listings like Yelp or Merchant Circle or Thumbtack, um, any of those type of websites, even on LinkedIn and Craigslist. You want to make sure you're using your keyword set as much as possible. Okay, so let's uh, go to the next slide here and uh, see what we have. So in preparing for uh, SEO, you need to think about what is your site about or what is your page about? It doesn't even have to be a whole website that you're thinking about. It could just be one page on your website. So for instance, the About Me page or the About Us page, you want to you know, look at that page and, and you know, try and kind of figure out what is the keyword uh, or the keyword phrase that you want your About Me page to be associated with. And then you're going to do several things on that page to uh, make it all come together. And what is the purpose? You know, depending on what type of business you have, you have a certain purpose. Do you want to educate? Do you want to sell something? Um, do you want to build a community of some type? So um, if you're following me in any of my endeavors, you'll notice that I have multiple websites and multiple different purposes. So for instance, the My Marketing Hotline website is about teaching people how to do better online marketing and giving them tips and ideas like I'm doing today. And it's all free. Basically, I'm just trying to build a community and a following. And maybe one day I'll come out with a product to sell and um, you know I'll advertise it to this group because this group of people um, have a certain purpose. They, they want to market themselves. They want to market their business. And whatever type of product I develop for that crowd, this would be the appropriate place to um, tell people about it. If it's a, a how to do photography, then this wouldn't be the appropriate place to do that. So, um, you know, in my photography uh, business, I have several different uh, websites. I have one geared at high school seniors. I have one geared at actors and models. I have one geared at business type uh, headshots. Um, I just have my creative uh, kind of personal stuff on my own website. So I have very different focuses or purposes for each one of them. So you want to think about what is the purpose of your website or what is the purpose of your web page? What do you want it to communicate? And what do you want people to do or get from your website when they visit it? And then the last preparation bullet here is about how committed you are. Um, may seem like a strange question, but uh, this stuff takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. It's not that hard to do, but you have to be committed to it. You have to constantly, um, you know, keep up with technology and, and you know, things change. Like, for instance, Google Hangouts, or uh, not Hangouts, but Helpouts. Uh, it was a thing that Google tried for a little while, and basically you could connect with someone live and get help and on any topic you wanted and you could either charge for it or you could do it for free and I was on help outs uh, and I gave it the similar advice that I give here and they shut it down recently so you know they they try things and you know they don't work um, so just like you you may try things that don't work so um, you know, you have to be pretty committed to whatever idea that you have because it's going to take some time and effort to make that happen. So let's um, let's jump on over to the web here and see if I can show you some live uh, searches. I'm going to go ahead and share my 
uh, web screen here. Let's do this. Okay, I'm going to share the entire screen and then I'm going to bring up a new window. So I told you I'd show you how to do an incognito window. If you're using Chrome, you go into Chrome and then right here under the file pull down, you can choose new incognito window. So when you bring up this window, you, uh, you're not going to be logged in. So let me go to Google and I'll show you. Oh, I'm actually logged in. Did I do it right? Let's try it again. Yeah, there we go. I knew it didn't look right. So when you, when you bring up an incognito window, it actually tells you. It says you have gone incognito. There's a little you know, figure here with a glass, glasses and a hat on like he's a spy or something. And now Google doesn't know who you are. So let me go to google.com. And we'll do a search for Las Vegas headshot. Now see what it's doing is it's giving me a drop down with some possible, um, you know, search re search terms that have been used in the past. And it looks like Las Vegas headshot photographers with a plural is um, something that's commonly typed. Now my keyword set that I've used is Las Vegas headshot photographer. So um, it may be less used than the plural version of that. But Google is smart enough to figure out, um, you know, that they need to put an S on that to make me come up in the search results. So let's just take a look at this. So it looks pretty much the same as it did earlier today. We've got the listing here, and we've got the listing here, and the listing here, and then I've got the video here. So it pretty much looks the same. Let's just do a search for the plural, Las Vegas headshot photographers, which you would think, well, it, it may not be too different, but um, let's see. So let's do a search. And then here we see I've still got this position right here. And then we've got Thumbtack and Yelp, which pretty much always come up because those are big community websites and it's hard to, um, you know, not find them. And then let's scroll down here. We've got two listings. And notice mine aren't part of these for some reason. Um, I, maybe if I did map more results, I would see myself. But I'm not going to do that. Um, and then some other websites here. So you can see that the, um, the top listing is still the, the most durable listing. It shows up even in the photographer's um, keyword research. Okay. All right. Search result. Okay. Just for kicks, let's go on over to bing.com. And this is still an incognito window. I'm not signed in to Bing. So let's just do a search over here. For Las Vegas headshot photographer and see what comes up. So Thumbtack is coming up first. We've got picture people. These are all corporate type entities. Uh, we got headshots Las Vegas, which is not mine, but here's mine right there. Second on the list for organic search results. So that's pretty cool. And then down here, we've got a list of uh, map results which for some reason I'm not on. And if I keep on going down, uh, we see my other website here, Las Vegas Headshot Photographer. Uh, we see another one of my websites here, aceheadshots.com. And here's another one here, aceheadshots.com. So you can see I also come up multiple times on Bing. And that's only because I've really 
identify this keyword set as a keyword set I want to be found for. Okay, so let's jump back on over to the slide set and see what else we've got. Let me try and find the right window here and we'll switch back over to the slides. Okay, so um, you should be kind of ready to start doing your SEO now after you've done your uh, preparation. And here's some tips about uh, SEO and what you should do to identify um, or make your website come up. So the first tip is focus on one thing. That's what I mentioned before. Um, so either on the whole website or the page, you want to focus on that one keyword set, even in a blog post. So if you do a blog post, uh, you want to focus on just one thing. So let me um, share my screen a little bit differently here so I can jump back and forth and show you. I'm going to bring up my other website, which is Ace photo and video.com okay so this website is kind of a kind of an umbrella website it's got a multi focus to it it's got a focus on photo and it's got a focus on video so it's not just about one thing but when I create pages, I want to make sure those pages are focused on one thing. So for instance, this page here, Business Headshot Photography Services. Notice the name. I, I named it Business Headshot Photography Services. That's the, the, the name, uh, the, the first heading on the page. And then here, the title name is Business Headshot Photography Services. And then within the copy, I try and use business headshot photography services, the keywords that, um, you know, are, I'm trying to focus on. And then if you scan down, you know, throughout the copy, I try to, you know, interlace those keywords, maybe not the whole thing, but parts of them within the copy of the page. So Google can look at this and, and clearly see that this page is about business headshot photography services. So let's just do a little test here. I did this probably about a week ago. I went in and optimized this page. And this is a total live test. I've not tried this yet. So we're going to bring up an incognito window. And we're going to go to Google again. And we're going to put in my keyword set, which is business, business headshot photography services. Okay. So we've got some ads here. And we've got business headshot photography. This is a Yelp page. And then we've got uh, Thumbtack and Thumbtack again and Thumbtack again. And you can see how it's kind of hard to compete against those guys. Um, we've got Headshots Plano. This is a Texas-based photography company. Um, another Texas-based photography company. Uh, Washington, D.C. So it looks like I need to identify my locality when I, when I type this in. So this is, you know, most likely what your customer is going to do as well. So I'm going to type in Las Vegas Business Headshot Photography Services. Okay, let's see what comes up. We've got Yelp, Yelp, Thumbtack, Thumbtack. Oh, there we go. We've got Wayne Wallace Photography in the map listing. We've got Ace Photo and Video, and we've got Ace Headshot. So I've got three listings right there within the map results. Okay, if we scroll down, now we see Business Headshot Archives. So this is my website that I just showed you, Ace Photo and Video. And it's actually finding the, the archive um, category 
of business headshot. See that? It's not actually finding the page that I just showed you. Um, but then if we look down here, we'll see business headshot samples. Okay, this is another page. Uh, actually, it's a blog post that I have. And then if we look down here, we'll see the page that I was talking about, business headshot photography services. So this page right here is a little bit older than the two above it. So you can see it's not quite climbed above these yet, but I think it will eventually because it's more specific to that search. But these two pages had been around longer, so that's why they come up a little bit higher. Uh, you can also see Ace Photo and Video homepage here. So basically I come up one, two, three, four times, and that's because I've tried to optimize for business headshot in a variety of ways. Uh, whereas before I was targeting Las Vegas headshot photographer, this one is targeting business headshot because I notice that a lot of people that call me actually use those words. They say, I need a business headshot. So that's what they're typing on Google most likely as well. And you, you need to listen to your customers and you need to you know, talk to them and find out what it is that they would type because what you think they would type and what they actually type is two different things. You know, it's like thumb drives or, or, um, or jump drives or um, USB drives. I mean, what do you call them? You know, everybody calls them something different. So you don't really know until you know, and then you have to start optimizing for that. Uh, let me also show you um, another page that I optimized recently. Let's go here to um, client testimonials and reviews. So this page, um, when I first put it together, I didn't do a very good job of optimizing it. But one of the big things that people look for is client testimonials and client reviews. And when I first put this page together, I think I only used testimonials. I didn't use reviews. So I wanted to include the word reviews. So I went through and I re-optimized this page and I changed the name of the page to include reviews. I changed the title of the page to include reviews. I sprinkled reviews, reviews, you know, all over the page. So let's try it out. This should come up pretty high in the search results. So let's go back to Google. And what I'll do is I'll put um, photography because that word is relevant on my website. I'll put photography, client testimonials, and reviews. So I didn't specify Las Vegas, and let's just see what comes up here. Yeah, obviously I'm not going to uh, see uh, Las Vegas-based stuff because we're not signed in to Google, and it doesn't know that you know I'm in Las Vegas, although it could actually tell just based on the IP number. But let's put Las Vegas in here and see what happens. Okay, so there's an interesting um, little search. I haven't done this one yet, so this is kind of revealing. So here we've got the top rank listing for that keyword set. Um, we've got the next one, and I've got my video right here. I also know that this image is mine, and this image is mine. So these are all pages that I've put um, testimonials or reviews or both on there. So let's tweak this a little bit. Let's do a search for Las, Ve Las Vegas photographer reviews because this is more likely what someone would probably type. And actually, you can see that Google's suggestion right here is Las Vegas photographers reviews. But um, yeah, let's just take that and see what happens. 
So of course we're going to get Yelp because there's lots of reviews on Yelp. And if people go to Yelp, then they're going to see my listing because I have reviews <clears throat> on my listing. I do appear in the map results right here, which is good. And I've got a 4.8 review, which is nice. And then if I keep on scrolling down, I don't appear anywhere else in there. So maybe I need to tweak the wording on that page of mine to make it come up a little bit higher. Let's see if I come up on the second page at all. Nope, not on the second page. So maybe my keyword set isn't um, very accurate. Let's try testimonials because maybe someone would type testimonials. Okay. Doesn't look like it's coming up on the first page of that result either. But see, this isn't really a keyword set that I pay a whole lot of attention to, but maybe I, I will start that. So let me also show you on a blog post how you can do the same thing. So let's go back over to Ace Photo and Video. So you can see how this is kind of, kind of dynamic and you need to um, kind of play with it and work with it. So here's a brand new post that I just made the other day on May 6th and the blog title is commercial product photography and I talk about how I worked with Nike uh, you know a couple weeks ago doing some product photography and you'll notice that the page name is also commercial product photography and then within the copy I try and mention those keywords or that phrase as well and then I also tagged it with the appropriate uh, tag names that are my keywords so let's just do a search for this. Okay, so we'll leave the Las Vegas in there. And we'll do a search for Las Vegas commercial product photography. And let's see what comes up. So not in the first couple of listings. Okay, it looks like I don't even come up on the first page which doesn't surprise me because I really don't optimize for that. Uh, I just put that page up so it probably hasn't had time to climb up in the search results. Um, here, lasvegascommercialphotographer.com, that actually is my domain name, um, but this is an old page on a different website and um, you know, this one's kind of fallen out of grace because I haven't done much with it. It's not mobile ready. Um, so this one needs to be replaced with a new website. Um, it's a constant battle. You know, you constantly got to be working on this stuff. So, uh, yeah, my new page, my new blog post isn't coming up. Let's try the third page and let's see. No one's ever going to go this far. That's why you want to be on the first page or at a minimum the second page. Uh, here's another one of my old pages at waynewallacephotography.com. Um, I don't see my ace photo so um, obviously I need to do some more work on that page but that's an example of how you can optimize a blog post. So you know obviously I need to talk about commercial photography more on this page, there's more that I could do. I could add more copy. Um, I could add more images. You know, maybe even create some more blog posts. So there's a category that fills up with multiple blog posts. So if you come down here to the category list, you know, I'd have commercial photography, and then I'd have multiple blog entries. Right now, I only have one. So those are the kind of things that you want to do to get that page to rank. So let's go back over to the slide set and look at some of these other keyword tips here. And let me just flip back over to the Google Hangouts to see if there's any questions 
Parker's got a question. Can you give me a working definition of organic search? Um, sure. Let me try and give you a definition of organic search. Um, basically, organic is this right here. Okay. When you do a search, you get an ad. This is obviously an ad because it's got that little yellow label there. And then this right here is marketingtool.com, which I'm also listed on. And, you know, this is a kind of a directory website. It's got a lot of different photographers on it. Um, here's a photographer I know, Olga. Uh, she's listed organically as the second search result for Las Vegas commercial product photography. So she's probably getting a lot of calls for product photography. Okay. So this is an organic listing right here. Once you get down a little bit lower, close that. Uh, once you get down a little bit lower here, you'll see Yelp. I wouldn't call this organic because it's a directory website. Um, if you see map listings like we did before, um, you know, those are not organic listings. Let's go back and see if we can find a map listing. Okay, like these right here. These are not organic listings. These are map listings. So this is a Google property, and they're showing people that have listed themselves uh, as local businesses. But uh, this, you know, these two search results right here are organic. And if you want to come up right here, then you got to do a lot of hard work to get there. And my website I showed you comes up there because I've, I've done a lot of things to make it come up. Um, so let's jump back over and see if there's any follow-up questions on that. Did that answer your question, Parker? All right. Let's go. Um, hopefully you guys can see my screen because I've got a little... Uh, camera off here. Can you see my screen? That would be a bummer if you couldn't. <laughs> okay. Let me turn the camera on and see. Does that change anything? Can you see my screen now? I'm sharing, so I don't know if I need to have that on or not. Uh, I could have just flubbed up this whole presentation. Oh, well. Let's keep on rocking and rolling. Okay, Parker said thanks, so at least she heard me. <laughs> All right, let's go back over to my keynote presentation. So um, let's review these things because I already talked about some of these things. So focus on one thing. Pick your keyword set and focus on it. And then... Um, you know, you'll be found for that keyword set. Mention your keywords and phrases as much as possible, okay? Uh, in the titles, in the copy, um, when you're naming your image files, um, anywhere you can put that keyword, you know, or that phrase, use that. Uh, in the descriptions, in the meta tags. Link to internal pages. Let's show you what that means if we go back over to my business headshot photography page. And you'll see here that there's a link. So Ace Photo and Video provides high quality business headshot photography services. That's a hyperlink. When I click on that, it takes me to an internal page on my, on my website. So Google likes that. It likes that you know people can drill down into your website to get more information. So that would be an internal link. You want to try and do that as much as possible when it's uh, relevant. Uh, so here I say see examples of all the colors that we have and you click here and actually this one goes off page, off my website. I'm actually bringing them to the Savage Paper color picker uh, website. So this isn't an example of an internal page. That's an example of an external page. 
Okay. Let's see if I have any other uh, links here. Okay, so here's one. Be sure to read our many great client testimonials and reviews. So notice the name of this link. I tried to keep the same as the name of the page. So I can click on that, and it takes me over to my internal page that's named the same thing. And then, obviously, the title and all the content has that uh, keyword phrase as well. So Google knows that, hey, these are relevant, um, you know, uh, things that are related to testimonials and reviews. And what that'll also do for you is it'll make you, um, uh, let me just show you here, ace photo and video. When Google presents your information, if it has enough information, oh, we're on Bing. Um, Bing doesn't do it like Google does, so let me uh, go over to Google and do it. Search, copy this, and then we'll go to Google. And then we'll do a search here. Now, notice I'm logged in, so it knows it's me, but in this case, it doesn't matter. Okay. So you see what Google did here is it said, oh, I know Ace Photo and Video, and it put it up. It brings up the Google reviews from the Google uh, Plus page, and it also presents you with my Google Plus page because it's linked up. And then in addition to that, it's showing you sub pages that are from my website. So let's see if that Okay, yeah, see, so it knows all these pages, and there's the client testimonials and reviews. And what Google does is Google decides which sub pages it wants to show right here underneath your main listing. The only thing you can do to control this really is to create a good website that has good structure. So in this case, case Google knows that oh okay this page is about video and this is a blog page so it's gonna put those underneath in the um, in the listing okay so that's why you want to make sure all your page names are right the titles are right uh, anything that's on that page is related to video services and then Google is gonna say oh this is a, a pretty you know pretty good page here I can I can show that as a sub page. So let's jump back over to the Hangout, see if there's any other questions coming up here. All right. And let's go back over to the keyword, I mean the uh, keynotes. So we want to link to internal pages. We want to name pages with our keywords. That's what I told you about before. Whenever you name the page, you want to make sure you do it um, you know, with the keywords. And notice on my pages when I named them that there's a dash in between the words. You don't want to just slam all those words together. You want to put a dash in between them. And this is the web kind of standard. You want to use a dash, not an underbar. Okay? If you just slam all these words together, Google's smart enough to figure it out. But, hey, why not make it easy for Google to, you know, identify your stuff and show it to people. You know, don't make it hard for Google because Google will just say, eh, I don't want to figure this out right now, and it'll put you in some bucket to look at later. Uh, you want to make sure it's as easy as possible for Google to identify you as a valid um, website. That being said, you also want to link up your page to Google. So, for instance, right here, you can see that I have a link over to my Google Plus page. So, if I click on this, it brings me over to my Google Plus Ace Photo and Video page. And if you look at the About page, and let me see if I can find it. Okay. So, see right here? I call out uh, my Google Plus URL. I have my website listed here, and I've actually gone through the verification process to verify that Ace Photo and Video is a real website. I own it. 
I linked the two together uh, with Google, and now it knows that, hey, this property, this Google Plus property page is related to this website, and the same, you know, pr the same identity, the same entity owns both of them because I was able to verify that. So you definitely want to do that. You want to verify your page and you also want to verify your profile. So notice here, this is my Wayne Wallace Ace Photo and Video profile. So on Google Plus, you can have not only a profile, but you can have a business page. And you want to make sure you have both of those. Uh, of course, that one's the My Marketing Hotline page because that's the account I'm logged into. But uh, this is the Ace Photo and Video page right here. Okay, so you want to make sure that you link up the Google Plus properties as well as these other properties like Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, people often ask me why I have so many Facebook accounts. Well, um, there's a time and a place where sometimes you need to have a business um, account to do certain things. I can't really explain the details of it right now, but sometimes you need a personal profile that matches your domain uh, or that connects to your domain. So when I set up a new uh, domain like Ace Photo and Video, I also set up a new Facebook, I set up a new profile, I set up a new business page. So that's why I have so many, as you can see right here, I have so many pages. Okay, let's go back over here. So all these little things that you do tell Google that, hey, you're a pretty valid um, entity and I should send people to you. So this is what you wanna do. Um, here I've also shared the Google Plus uh, review that was done by a third party person it was not created by me. I just shared it on my page. So that's another way that I've connected Google to my actual domain. And, um, you know, it, it, Google knows that. It sees that. And then here I did the same thing. Here's a review video from my YouTube page. So if you click on this YouTube logo, it'll take you over to... Um, my my profile on YouTube okay and the same thing is true for YouTube you can actually have a profile page and a business page and it's good to set up both of those okay so if you go back up here to my links you'll see YouTube and then people can go right to the YouTube page and this is for the actual business this one right here. Oh, no, actually, that's the personal one. Let's go. Um, yeah, I'm not signed in, so we don't see that. But I think if, it, if I just go to Ace Photo and Video, yeah. If you just go to Ace Photo and Video, that's the, the business page, which I don't really have anything on at the moment. I've been using my personal page for that. That's where it gets kind of confusing is, you know, they have so many options, you know, which one do you want to use? Um, the business page or the profile page? So I don't have a clear answer for you on that, um, but maybe in the future I will. So anyway, those are the things. Also, Twitter, you want to hook up your Twitter account to your, to your domain. So when Google analyzes your page, it's going to see all these connections, and it's going to know that they're all valid. And you can see also here down the bottom that I have some Google Plus linkages down here. So Google can identify uh, that this is all, you know, one company. Okay. So let's go back over to the keynote. And you want to remove slow widgets or slow loading whatever they are, whether it's a video or a slideshow or some... Java, you know, app that's, you know, not working correctly. Um, you know, sometimes 
these little guys here that you, you know, they're fancy, you know, they, they let people share stuff easily. Sometimes these things break down because the hosting website is maybe getting too much traffic or whatever and they load slow. So one of the reasons um, that Google will ding you in the search results is if you have a slow loading page. You know, if your page takes more than, say, like two to three seconds to, to load, then, you know, that's not good. So you definitely want to monitor what you're putting on your website and remove any slow loading things. Uh, keyword images. You want to keyword your images. So let me give an example of that. Let's go over to the business headshot photography page. And you can see here that when I titled this, I titled it as environmental corporate headshot. And then this one here, I titled as business, business headshot sample on black background. So when you go to Google images, let's just jump over here. Let's bring up a new window and go to business headshot sample on black. And we'll go to, oh, I don't even have to go to images. It's right there, okay? So if somebody's just doing a search for business headshot samples, maybe on black, um, there's one of my images and there's one of my images. So you never know how people are gonna search for things. Maybe it's someone looking just for samples because they're, they're thinking about getting photos done. So here's my image. Here's my image, here's my image, here's my image. Let's keep on scanning. Okay, so this is also a generic search, you know, based on like worldwide. So I'm coming up, you know, multiple times in that search. Uh, but I'm also logged in. So Google knows that, hey, you're located in Las Vegas. Let me show you some stuff that's coming from Las Vegas. So this is why you want to keyword your images and not just call them, you know, one, two, three, four, five. You want to actually put a name to that image so Google can um, identify that as a headshot or whatever it is that you're trying to uh, identify it as. So let's go back over to the keynote. Uh, update regularly. This is a big one, okay? If you have a website that you never update and it just sits there stagnant, then it's going to drop in the listings. Um, sometimes on websites, you'll have like a last date modified. This one doesn't have that feature. But if you go to my blog entry, this is why it's good to have a blog on your website, not hosted somewhere else. Because as you make blog entries, like this one was posted on May the 6th, you know, it's showing Google that you're an active website, you're regularly posting. Yeah, maybe your homepage doesn't update regularly, but at least you're blogging and you're adding content to your website. Um, and then Google can come through and look at it and say, oh, you know, he just updated his website, you know, a couple of days ago or a day ago or whatever. And it's going to say, oh, I like that. So it's going to move it further up in the search engines. Okay. See, none of this stuff is that difficult. It's just, you know, a matter of doing it. And uh, sometimes when you have too many websites like I do, um, you know, you don't update regularly like you should. Um, and then another thing is get good backlinks. You know, everybody thinks, oh, I got to get all the backlinks, you know, I can. And they start submitting their website to these link farms. And, you know, that's just not good. So what you want to do is you want to get links from good websites, not spammy websites. So if you're listed on Yelp or Thumbtack or, you know, any of the, the kind of real directories, um, you know, maybe even Craigslist. If you're posting an ad on Craigslist, you know, that, that's a valid kind of website. Um, but it's also good to have other people write about you in their blog posts and link to you. 
So um, try and, you know, make some relationships and get as many links as you can from other people. If anyone uh, is listening to this video and would like to help me out, uh, you can link to acephotoandvideo.com. That would certainly help out my uh, listing. Okay, or you can link to mymarketinghotline.com, whatever you want. Uh, and then the last big tip is time. You gotta give, you gotta give all this stuff time to bubble up to the top of Google. You know, sometimes it'll come up immediately and then it will drop. Um, I've noticed this with video. I've noticed it with web pages, um, blog posts. Sometimes when you initially publish, Google will shoot you right to the top of the search engines and it, you'll stay there for a short period of time to see if it, it gets any traction. Because think about the news. Say you just you know, uh, were, were somewhere and there was a major news event and you blogged about it and it's going to shoot it to the top. Well, if it's something like 911 or some, you know, uh, the Mayweather Pacquiao fight or, you know, some kind of worldwide trending um, event, then that's why they do it. They shoot it to the top so people will see it. And then if a lot of people start sharing it and liking it and talking about it, then it's probably just going to stay there. It's not going to drop to the bottom. If you're not that type of event, then what happens is you're going to drop to the bottom of the Google and you're going to organically bubble up to the top. So you just got to give things time. It usually takes about three to six months to start seeing any long-term long-standing results when you build a website or post video or anything like that okay so let's jump back over and see if we have any questions coming in here uh, let's go to the Google hangout okay don't see any other questions here but uh, you guys are still watching so must be doing something right um, Let's go back over to the keynote. Okay, website development. Um, I talked about these things in the past, but I'll bring it up again because uh, these are the tools you want to use. If you're on a Mac, then I highly recommend Rapid Weaver. Um, I've actually got it running here, so I can show you. This is Rapid Weaver. It's a very drag and drop, um, user friendly web development tool. It creates very clean uh, websites. It puts all the right code in there. If you use the right theme, then you'll be um, mobile ready. You'll be responsive. So let me show you a website that I created with that. If you remember, Las Vegas Headshot Photographer. Com. This website was created with Rapid Weaver. So let me, oh, I typed it in wrong. Let's see. Las Vegas, a shot spelled wrong. S H O T, photographer. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so notice here that the domain name is Las Vegas Headshot Photographer. If you can buy the .com or .net or .org or whatever of your keyword set, then that's a pretty good thing to do. I also have a folder named Las Vegas Headshot Photographer with the dashes. So I've got that keyword set right there in the domain name. Um, this page is a pretty basic page. Uh, I wouldn't even call it a web site, although it is. I'd call it more of a landing page because basically all I do is give testimonials. So I have 100 plus testimonials here. You can just keep on paging through them and reading them. I don't know how many people ever do this, but they're there. 
if you want to read them, I've got over a hundred of them. Okay. And then there's a link here to about me because people want to know who they're dealing with. So I have a little bit of uh, talk about me and then I have a link to my portfolio, which is actually a different website. So I'm linking away to a portfolio website. So um, it's really a simple little website, Las Vegas Headshot Photographer, but it comes up number one because most likely because of the name and the domain name .com. Uh, I've got all the keywords in there. So if you're lucky enough to be able to purchase your keyword set as a domain, then I highly recommend it. So that uh, was a little bit about Rapid Weaver. I highly recommend it. They just came out with a new version six, which I haven't really delved into yet, but I'm about to. And then you can also use WordPress. And that's a platform that is based on, you know, a database. And it's got a, a back end that you can log into. So I'll show you here with mine. We'll go to Ace Photo and Video and WP Admin. And we'll log in. So log in. Okay, waiting. Okay, so now I'm logged into the back end of the WordPress website. And I can go look at my posts. Okay, these are the posts. So here, let's show you the business headshot page. So business headshot, uh, actually that's a page, not a post. So let's go to pages. And business headshot photography, uh, that's not the page. This is the page right here, business headshot photography services. Let's do an edit on this page. And if you notice, uh, back on this page here, I've got a little green light, which for SEO, that's good. So I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so the name of the page is Business Headshot Photography Services. I've got the content here, and then down below, I'm using the WordPress SEO plugin by Yoast, and it actually checks things for you. It says, hey, your article heading has got the keyword. Your page title has got the keyword. Your page URL has the keyword. Your content has the keyword. Your meta description has the keyword. So it kind of checks all this stuff for you and lets you know if you're, you know, if you're hitting all the high points that you should be hitting. All right. So it makes it pretty pretty darn easy uh, that's why I say if you can post to Facebook then you can SEO your website now you may need help setting up your WordPress and if you do let me know I can set up a website for you pretty easily and uh, point you to some videos where you can even see how you do it yourself so that's WordPress let me jump back on over to the key uh, the um, uh, slide set here and let's see what our last slide is. Okay, so web hosting. If you're gonna put up a website, if you don't have one yet, maybe you want a new web host, I recommend InMotion web hosting. They're based out of LA. I recently switched all my domains over to, web uh, to InMotion web hosting. Uh, this is my affiliate link right here. If you need to um, go there, what you can do is just go to my personal website, waynewallace.com, and I always try and hand out affiliate links, so that way if you end up purchasing those products, then I get a little bit of commission. So come over here to waynewallace.com, click on Tools and Resources, and what I do is I publish all of the tools and resources that I use to market my business, and these are all affiliate programs. So if you click on this button right here, it'll take you on over to the InMotion Hosting, which is the company that I use, and I uh, have very much liked working with them. They have great customer service available 
24 seven. You can call them. You actually speak to a real person uh, that works for that company. It's not some guy in India doing tech support. Uh, nothing wrong with the Indians. I, I work with them as well, but it's always uh, nice to talk to somebody that works at the company because uh, you're going to get a little bit better support. So check it out um, and then feel free to check out any of the other tools and resources that I have listed here. I use them all uh, or I have used them in the past and I recommend them. So that's about all I have today for the Monday coaching call. Let me jump back over to the Hangout and see if we have any questions. Um, let me also switch on over to video mode so you can see my lovely face. There I am right there. <laughs> So um, any questions either on the phone or in the Hangout here, be happy to answer any questions that you may have about uh, web development or marketing. I thank you guys for attending. Uh, Parker and uh, who else was it? I think it was John. Let's go see. Yep, John and Parker. Appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me here for an hour. And if there's no other questions, then I will let you guys go. You can always, oh, there is a question from Parker. Uh, is Rapid Weaver for Mac and PC? No, Rapid Weaver is only for Mac. It's a Mac product. So sorry if you've got a Windows machine. Um, it's a great tool. I would definitely recommend buying a Mac just to be able to use Rapid Weaver um, and Macs are just great so uh, but I won't get into a you know who's better uh, debate but um, you know Dreamweaver you know that's by Adobe you know it used to be um, what was the company it used to be some other company that I purchased Dreamweaver from and then uh, Adobe bought them. Dreamweaver is kind of like, you know, a machine gun. You know, it's got all kinds of features and you can do a lot with it, but it's kind of overwhelming for the first time user. Uh, Rapid Weaver is not, but it's still powerful enough to give you good quality uh, websites and allow you to do things that you want to do. So, highly recommend Web Rapid Weaver. Uh, WordPress again is another easy to use thing for the newbies or the experienced people. So I recommend both of those platforms for doing uh, web development. Okay, if you want to email me in the future any questions, you can do that at mymarketinghotline at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, no problem, Parker. Uh, appreciate you being here. Look forward to. Uh, meeting up with you again sometime in person and um, I'll see you guys next week. I'll try and come up with something interesting and fun to talk about. If you have any questions in the meantime, email me at mymarketinghotline at gmail.com. Make sure you register for next week's webinar slash conference call and tell all your friends and we can have a big party over here. Okay, have a great day and a great week. Let's go out and make some sales and make some money. Bye-bye.